Welcome to Face to Face, and today we're going to talk about politics, we're going to talk about peace process, we're going to go to Colombia, and I'm with Gabriel, and welcome to Face to Face. Thank welcome. you for having me here. You're welcome. So, you have been studying, you do you study politics. Yeah, I'm studying literature and culture, actually, okay. which is related to politics. Okay. Um, I'm studying at Stony Brook University okay. in Long Island. Great. And then, so you follow the whole, the whole process, the whole election. It was just a few months ago, election in Colombia, who are very important election because of the peace process and so on and so forth. Yeah, so I was following very closely the process. And actually, well, in Colombia, we have like two rounds of uh, presidential elections. And the first one with several candidates and the second one with the two front runners. Yeah. And I had the opportunity to go to Colombia ah, for the great. second round. Oh, yeah. Well, fantastic. So I, I could uh, experience You were in the middle time. of the fire. Yeah. Because it was very complicated, no? It was complicated, but it was exciting at, mm -hmm, at the same mm -hmm, time. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I think that that's the most important thing about what happened in Colombia. So can you synthesize a little bit what, how did you see the situation a little bit before the election and then during the election and then the, the result? Yeah, well, I think what, what happened in Colombia uh, can be summarized like in two events. Mm -hmm. One event was uh, not a surprise, which was the rise to power to the right. Yeah. Uh, that was something to, that was expected. expected yeah. yeah, I expected it. Uh, mm -hmm. We had a peace process with a lot of problems. Mm -hmm. There was a plebiscite last year that was lost. Uh -huh. And then a lot of uh, inconformity with the center-right uh, government that we had before. Mm -hmm. So it was expected. But the second event was the rise of alternative movements, two kinds of alternative movements. One more like a civic, liberal, middle-class mo uh, social movement that is basically against this far-right government. Mm -hmm. And also, and that was the big surprise, uh, re-emergence of a more social um, platform, political platform, associated with uh, LGBT, environmentalism, uh, rural mo social movements, indigenous, and the indigenous communities. community involved. Exactly. Yeah. And that was actually the second candidate, the candidate that was uh, at the end in the second place. And coming from a country in which mm -hmm. all those social movements has, have been st stigmatized for yeah. years, it was and a big surprise. And the leaders surprise. are killed almost not every day, but it's a it's lot of people who are still facing... Yeah, that's a very uh, horrible situation that is happening yeah. now. Like mm -hmm. Social and community leaders are being killed in mm -hmm. increasing rates mm -hmm. after the peace process. Mm -hmm. So, But that also was something it, that was expected. Dissipated, yeah. yeah, because of the problems with implementation of the, of the process. Mm -hmm. However, what is news is that now it is in the mainstream media uh, and it's part of the mainstream political debate. Yeah. Like in when uh, killings and decades before ha were happening, it was not in the political debate. Like people basically just ignore this kind of situation. Now people are protesting against it. No, he was protesting in New York, he was protesting, he was all organized all over all, in many, many countries. I know in Spain, I know in Paris, I know, I mean, I know it, it, it was quite a, 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 not a challenge, a big, Rally against the killing of... Uh, yeah, exactly. The, it was the day of the presidential inauguration. Exactly. So the, when the new president was... Took uh, office. Yeah, mm -hmm. took office. Or at the same time, there was a huge rally of people protesting mm -hmm. against him in part, but mainly defending social leaders. Mm -hmm. And so that's important because the, the political platform and the ideological conversation that was happening around those social leaders was out of the political debate because of the uh, armed conflict. Mm -hmm. And now it is again being considered as legitimate. And then that's the, the big news for me about what's happening now in Colombia. And even though the future is gonna be hard because of the violence that is taking place and the, the hard line uh, turn that is taking the government in terms of political rights, at the same time it's promising in terms of political organization, both from the point of view of these social movements and for the awakening of this middle class that was apathetic like years before yeah. and now they are engaged. Mm -hmm. Like new people, young people, or people that for decades were completely out of any political discussion. Mm -hmm. Now mm -hmm. they are involved mm -hmm. and they see a possibility of discussing politics. But don't you think that these activities of these people taking place now doesn't come from the peace process itself? 
It comes from the peace it process. It comes from the peace process. In a, in a way that is more complicated than just the peace process. Mm -hmm. It has to do with the fact that the the um, guerrilla that was uh, part of the peace process was a far left uh, guerrilla, yeah. and the the fact that they were in uh, taking arms against the state was used as a tool to stigmatize everything that was uh, progressive. Now they are they are not anymore uh, a threat to security, but they are, they are just a political party. Yeah. So in a way, that which, excuse which is already wrong. a big win. I mean, it, it, to, to, to come from uh, a, a violent structuration, organized uh, political frame to become a political frame using nonviolence, I think it's already, we need to recognize uh, I the, think that the, that's the great news. I, I think it's great news. It's great news, mm -hmm. but from my point of view, the, the real question is how that translates into the ideological landscape yeah. of of Colombia. Mm -hmm. For decades, the, the commonplace was that, in general, Colombia was a center-right uh, country. Yeah. Now, it turns out that it's not that clear, that it's more diverse, mm -hmm. that we have, of course, like a big part of the country that is at, at the right, but lots of people uh, have a different opinion. No, because they need to organize the structuration to be able to participate, to be represented, to have places, to be part of, of the of of the landscape. And I think it's a very interesting process. I think that's a peace process. Exactly. And so what is coming now is also yeah. how the history of this uh, conflict is going to be understood. Mm -hmm. uh, so how people are going to uh, weigh the different versions of what was going on. And that's like one of the main debates that are going to happen both in Congress and outside Congress. Well, history depends on the future. You always adapt history depending on what you need to do. Yeah, but for to, to years move. we had just one voice. I know. Now we have multiple voices. Exactly. So, and that's going to be interesting yeah, in that interesting. sense. Yeah, interesting. Yeah, no, no, absolutely. So, um, I just was listening to the news yesterday and, and they mentioned that you have now 10 uh, representatives of the FARC who are part of, of Congress. Uh, so, the process is on, 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 to, on to the peace process who was, that was part of the plan. Yeah, it was part of the plan. However, that was one of the most controversial yeah, aspects of the process. Mm -hmm. And probably most of people don't like them there. Mm -hmm. So they have no real... Or the uh, people who have the media. Uh, in general, even people that supported the process feel yeah. uncomfortable with, mm -hmm. with they mm -hmm. getting those seats on the, on, on the Congress. However, mm -hmm. What is more important in the Congress mm -hmm. is not only them. I mean, they are important because they are not fighting anymore, but they are in the Congress. But what is important is like the Congress itself had a significant change mm -hmm. uh, from being like with no alternative movements there. Almost all new parties were about to die. Suddenly, we have like more than 30 percent of the Congress. Uh, and women and, and, like, and, and indigenous community exactly. and, and then and basically alter, like non-establishment uh, candidates it's fantastic. It's fantastic. and both from like what we call like liberal yeah. center if you want yeah. to more radical or more progressive candidates we have very few times i just want to 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 take to have your take on 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 the transitional justice how because i know it's becoming a big discussion now where the, the new government or the new elected government wanted to to yeah. question that story. Yeah, uh, they they are gonna question it and they are gonna use the executive power yeah. to basically delay mm -hmm. all that they can mm -hmm. the transitions mm -hmm. because the main aspect and the controversial aspect of transitional justice for them is precisely the truth. Uh, everyone knows oh, what. So uh, they don't want to deal with that story. So yeah. Yeah. Everyone knows what the fact is, but yeah. no one knows what the state did. No one yeah. knows what the establishment did during the war. Uh -huh. I mean, every, I mean, people know, but there is no official discussion. Uh, official discussion on it. Uh -huh. And the transitional process is always truth in exchange of a punishment. Mm -hmm. So that's a big fight, and mm -hmm. one of the ideological fights that are, are going to take place in the future is how legitimate is in public eye this transitional justice pro process. Mm -hmm. So that we'll see what happens. Exactly. Anything you want to plug? Any uh, some any information people should know about? Uh, yes, there is a one of the things that is going to be part of this uh, ideological change is a uh, like a sort of a plebiscite, like a, a referendum on some propositions against 
political corruption and it's oh, going to take yeah. place in next August 26. Okay. So we'll see what happens. Yeah. I mean, how legitimate is that process as well, which is well, part who, of... The, who's going to vote no? No, the problem is not who votes no, but who okay. goes to vote. Yeah. Okay, so it, you need like, uh, uh, I don't remember the, the numbers, but I think that is more like 10 million people voting in order to pass. So oh. it's, a, it's, a huge, it's a huge bar to, to, oh. to so, get. So it's, it's in, in reality, it's a mobilization. It's, it's a kind of a mobilization, and it's also a way to look for a legit, for, so to legitimate. So let's say you have 10 million people who vote no to corruption, what's happened next? There are uh, two things happen in terms yeah. of like the technical thing is like it's a, a, a set of laws okay. or, uh, that are going to go to Congress okay. and they, they have this possibility to, yeah. to become law. To but more than that, and for me, it's more interesting, is the, the effect that it has in the yeah. public. Okay. So of a, uh, it's, it's part of this awakening of people watching Congress. Yeah. Um, so it's a little bit like the, I know you don't like too much the publicity, but of the, of, for the peace process, it, it's... The difference is that it's less controversial. Yeah. It's less controversial because everyone thinks that the government is yeah. corrupt. And that's but, the, but they need to mobilize 10 million people. It is, it is a big challenge. It is, it is a big challenge. challenge. So uh, I don't know. I'm, I'm cautiously optimistic. Okay. So you're going to have to come back. Okay. And then we leave it here for now. Okay. And then uh, thank you again for, for being on the show. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. So that was Face to Face, and please keep watching your news on Presenza.com, and we hope to see you very soon. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.